Welcome back. Thanks for staying on board. John McGinnis with you. Sorry for the uh, sincere apologies for the telephone issues. They were working through some bugs, and we do have, uh, looks like we got things working again. But it's a good time to shift gears anyway, because um, here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, charity, kindness, uh, but kind of focus on acts of charity that actually have true benefit and can make a difference uh, in the lives of people that uh, that are the beneficiary of somebody's act of kindness. Not just simply uh, throw resources at something. Uh, frankly, I think in the spirit of making the giver feel good, which is very appropriate. If you're motivated to uh, to be satisfied by sharing your resources with somebody else, that, of course, unto itself is good. But why not uh, combine with that uh, some efforts to make sure that the... Uh, that the gift, generosity, actually has a real, true, legitimate benefit to the recipient, and perhaps that benefit can be spread and, and maybe take on some kind of uh, infectious or contagious element unto itself that will cause other people to act in a similar fashion. So we've got a couple of gentlemen we're going to do, uh, try and get uh, together on this this afternoon, one of whom is in studio, and that would be uh, Vern Pearson, the district attorney of El Dorado County, who's played a part in this uh, in this program historically, and also uh, Ken Steers, who's going to be joining us uh, telephonically in just a moment. And uh, the name Ron Middlestad is probably one that rings a bell to many in the audience. And Ron uh, is has uh, led the organization that we talked about, uh, oh, gosh, a year or more ago, as they were looking at their options of doing business in the state of California. That business, of course, Waste Connections. And uh, Ron has always been a generous uh, philanthropist in this region and has helped out with so many various causes uh, to improve the lives of others less fortunate. And, uh, Vern, I'm going to ask you to just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what these gentlemen have done. Well, let me back up about uh, several years ago, and I... uh, particularly from a law enforcement's perspective that um, as you were in for many, many years, John, you know that that, um, you see uh, law enforcement, the fire service, they have regular contact with with, uh, children and it's a reoccurring thing that you see that because of uh, whatever's happened with their parents, um, the situation that they're in uh, is not a very good one. And that um, uh, we would generally characterize kids as being, these kids as being at, at risk. Um, and there's a number of different organizations that benefit those types of kids. Uh, CASA is one court appointed special advocates, right. uh, big brothers, big sisters is another one that in particular we've partnered with over the last several years. And what we try to do in is to provide a direct benefit to those kids that are at risk, kids that have a single parent, uh, many of which I would say particularly, uh, most, uh, uh, of concern are, are young boys who, really have never had a man in their life. And right. when I say man, I'm saying a, a role model. A role model. Right. And uh, so what we do is we, uh, in partnering with Big Brothers Big Sisters, we take a uh, between 150 and 175 of them uh, shopping um, on a de- early December, or mid, in this case, mid-December, Christmas morning. Or, uh, and it's a not just shopping for like a Christmas type thing, but it's... it's um, it's a $200 gift card that they have. They have either a big brother or a big sister or another volunteer that takes them. And it's primarily for necessities, but also the traditional type Christmas present thing. Um, and so it's a direct benefit to the individual kids that are in the best position or to need that actual, um, that type of assistance. Um, and it's shocking to us, particularly, you know, I live up in El Dorado Hills and in a affluent you know, Placer right. County, El Dorado County, pretty affluent counties. Right. Um, th- how surprising the volunteers that come out to help with this, that there are kids that go to school every day that don't have shoes that fit them properly. They don't have socks. They don't have underwear. They All of those types of things um, because they've been placed in foster care and they've been placed with a family member that simply can't afford to do it or whatever the, the case may be. Um, so several years ago, I approached the two gentlemen you referred to as to be the primary sponsors to help do this every year, and um, and they've been very generous with doing that. And uh, we're pleased to have at least uh, one of them that's going to join us here, uh, Ken uh, Se- Ken Steers uh, on the horn. Uh, Ken, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hey, th- thank, you, thank you for uh, joining the conversation, and thank you very much for what you've done. Now, I as I understand it, between you and Ron Middlestad, uh, there have been a case, there have been Christmas seasons where you guys have ponied up uh, $30,000, uh, uh, roughly $15,000 each to go to the benefit of these young kids who find themselves in a horrible way and clearly through no fault of their own. They haven't had a chance yet uh, to establish themselves to apply the appropriate effort, uh, discipline, and commitment to providing for themselves. They're stuck in the environment in which they find themselves. 
And you uh, and Ron have uh, been very gracious and generous in terms of working with these uh, organizations, CASA and Big Brothers Big Sisters, to help out. What? Uh, tell me what motivates you to do it, and uh, what's the experience been like for you? Well, um, first of all, uh, it, it helps that your DA for your county, uh, uh, you know, has all uh, back history on you and stuff before he. So you're you're it. saying that he'd prosecute you if you didn't do this? Well, I, you know, I don't, <laughs> no, the, um, quite honestly, uh, one of the main reasons the happiness effect is is that uh, it feels good to be able to uh, help. Yeah. And then, uh, um, like my company, uh, Freight Solution Providers, the uh, uh, um, um, there's going to be a whole bunch of those people volunteering and just fun watching how happy they are to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning to be uh, partnered up with kids and taking them shopping. It's what, uh, it's really a straw that stirs the drink in life. And have you uh, had a chance personally to interact with the kids as they go on the shopping spree? Have you actually had a chance to see them, their reaction to it? I'll tell you, uh, one one quick one is uh, um, there was uh, one kid uh, last year that uh, um, I look into his uh, um, uh, uh, shopping cart, and he had deodorant and underwear and socks, and that's about it. And I was like, um, this is all you want? I said, there's not much there. And he says, is it all right if I put uh, the rest of it on a gift card so I can take my sister shopping? Mm. And it's just it's just a beautiful feeling. You know, say, like, yes, you know, um, take her. You'd be able to take her Christmas shopping. That's And that's all he wanted. That's all he really needed. And his mind was underwear and deodorant and, you know, basic uh, uh, essentials. And it, so that, that that just, you know warms your heart yeah and yeah and the hope the hope that i would have is that uh, what's what's the age group what are we talking about here how what's the youngest uh, kid involved either one of you guys the the, the youngest are kids that are uh, well the, the typically what happens is that the, some of these kids are in in uh, recent placement in foster care so they're as young as uh, just a few months to several months old uh, uh and so obviously it's not you know them going shopping in the right, center but right. uh, but uh, up to uh, uh, 14, 15 years old. Um, and, you know, as Ken was alluding to, one of the, the, uh, one of the parts of this in terms of it, the people who like to come out and do it because they help them volunteer, one of the things we've made sure that we've done is we've, uh, we've asked for volunteers and assistance from the fire service, El Dorado Hills uh, Fire, as well as the, the Sheriff's Department, CHP and Fish and Game has assisted with it. But in particular, um, uh, one of the, you know, Ken was alluding to somebody who was, he took shopping, but, but, um, we had a deputy last year who's coming back again this year. Who's, he's a very big, large deputy, young deputy. He's probably six, four, six, five. And he took a last year, I believe it was a 14 year old boy that, um, I, I think it was a very emotional kind of a thing for him because he realized that this was the first he you know he had contact with this kid and this is right. really he's the first grown up decent you know you know male role yep. model he's ever had in his life and yeah, that's the big part of this yeah, can i interject yeah there is uh people that uh my wife and my uh kids have taken shopping when we started doing what is it about five years ago Vern? uh-huh that that they they become parts of our family yeah and and we we help them out throughout the year I mean, it's uh, the one thing, uh, you know, to touch on what you talked about earlier um, with uh, the people that fall through the cracks is, is that uh, there isn't re- the social safety net has some very big holes, and it still takes the community to step in and help. Yeah. And, well, I, I argue that the community, that people such as yourself stepping up and helping out, putting hands on, first of all, there's no. Uh, there's no overhead cost associated with this. Everything that is donated goes to the intended recipient. And, and my hope would be, and you probably have a sense to gauge this based upon your interaction with them, but they would see this firsthand. First of all, I, th- I think it's a, just a wonderful experience for a young man such as you described to see a uniformed deputy sheriff uh, that it, all of a sudden now this is somebody he likes. That represents somebody who it should all along, somebody to whom, to whom he turns for security and comfort. Uh, versus somebody who's taken mom and dad to jail, or eventually taken him to jail. Well, well a little bit, a little bit, John. A uh, little insight is: is I was one of those kids that was taken shopping when I was eight uh, years old. Interesting. Yeah, you know? yeah, and uh, so I'm just paying forward. Hey guys, uh, I got a group of twenty guys I'm taking up to Grants Pass right now, uh, Ponderosa High School Wrestling, 
and they're waiting for me to take off. So. All right, well, get them on the road. Uh, Ken, we're going to take a quick break anyway and come back and uh, continue right. the conversation. Uh, thanks for what you've done, and uh, kudos to uh, to Ron Middlecup. We still hope to hear from Ron Middlestad, I should say, uh, in the next few minutes. But uh, if not, I think it's very appropriate to note that this is a guy who could no longer do business in the state because the state was not being friendly to him and his efforts. So he moved his uh, his headquarters operation to Texas, but he, too, will send uh, resources to this cause this year right here in the Sacramento area. Stick around. We'll continue the conversation right after this. Welcome back. Thanks for staying on board. This is, uh, I think this is just a very uh, a g- a good program to highlight. I'm referring to this uh, effort apparently put together by uh, Vern Pearson, the Eldorado County District Attorney, who has uh, encouraged, recruited, drafted, uh, cajoled a couple of leaders in the in the community, very successful businessmen, to step up and help out with a cause to benefit uh, young people who find themselves in a position where they're not, uh, fundamentally, they're not going to enjoy Christmas to the extent the masses do uh, because of conditions associated with their family and their inability to provide. But in some cases, as we've heard uh, pointed out uh, earlier by Ken Steers, you're talking about young kids who who don't even have the bare essentials of life. And so as these people come forward, these very generous people step forward, uh, providing gift cards and taking kids on shopping sprees to actually go out into uh, retail stores, specific places, and uh, and entertain the concept of allowing them to make purchases. And, and as, as uh, Mr. Pearson so aptly pointed out, you have uh, law enforcement figures with whom they generally associate, associate negative experiences stepping into that role to take them out uh, literally and figuratively by the hand and allow them to go uh, shop for things they want and even things they need. I think it's an extraordinary example of doing the right thing and doing it in a very effective way. And uh, I'm also very happy to have joining us uh, by telephone from uh, from Texas, uh, Ron Middlestat. Uh, Ron, are you with us, sir? Yes, John, I am. Thank you. Thank you so very much for uh, for joining us and also uh, honestly a very sincere thanks for what you do. And just to, by way of a, a little bit of background here, if you don't remember out there in Radio Land. Ron is a guy who did business here in the Sacramento area for years with his company, Waste Connections, and uh, did a lot of great things and employed a lot of people and contributed uh, very selflessly to various uh, good causes. And uh, when he needed the assistance of the California legislature and leadership therein uh, to assist him in making it uh, a more business-friendly climate for him, uh, they rebuffed his uh, his request, and he had to move his headquarter operation to Texas, where he is today. But yet he continues uh, to be very generous to this region. So, Ron, thank you so very much for that. And I just uh, w- tell me what motivates you to do this, and what what do, what the experience has been like for you. Well, first off, John, thank you for uh, the kind words. Uh, we appreciate it, and and hope to live up to them. Uh, you know, this is a, a, the program B- Vern has spearheaded for a number of years there in El Dorado County. Great program. Um, uh, I've had the pleasure to be involved for the last uh, four years or so uh, personally and, and through our company. And, you know, uh, I think you said it very appropriately. Uh, the, you know, many of these are youth who, for no fault of their own, uh, particularly at this time of year, find themselves in a in a, a very difficult situation, and at the end of the day, I think, uh, you know, those of us uh, in business and otherwise who are, are fortunate enough to be able to do so, we, we have an obligation to, to try and take care of those that we can, and, and particularly those in the communities that uh, we live and work in. I think it's uh, I think it's a very noble effort, uh, and I, I know you uh, you get some personal satisfaction from it, and uh, which is appropriate, and and. Uh, I think you, you can't overstate the the benefit that comes from these young kids. My, my hope is that as they see uh, your kindness and generosity and that of Ken Steers and that of uh, Vern Pearson for putting it together and being a part of it and actually taking an active role in causing this to occur, uh, perhaps they will see this as a, a, a role model that they can emulate as they go forward and they can, hopefully will reach a degree of success in their life and whatever it is that they accomplish. Uh, be inclined to to share of themselves and their resources with others to make the world a better place. I like that so much more than uh, compulsory giving of resources to others. That has a there's there's overhead costs associated with it. There's not it's not efficient. You have no idea what the there's no measure to see exactly what the net result is. And we see that so much. There's had a couple of case examples of that recently uh, that I I really find it refreshing to to see a case in which some very very good men step up and do good, kind things for others. And, and I, 
I think it's impossible to measure the true outcome in terms of what what secondary benefits may come and, and see young kids that wind up uh, emulating that uh, the, the 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 positive example they've seen. So, uh, I think uh, Vern, what uh, any any other thoughts? Was this your brainchild? You actually. Uh, learned of this and working through Casa and Big Brothers Big Sisters, I assume, and reached out to guys that you thought could step up. Uh, yes, and well, uh, between you know some ideas and talking about it, and then largely my wife pushing to do it to where <laughs> it's a direct benefit to to the individual kids that the kids are are the ones that get taken and that they have a list of necessities that they need and um, and and being able to partner with the people who care and want to see, you know, all the things that we've been talking about actually happen. And, and Big Brothers Big Sisters has really been the biggest partner other than, than Ron and Ken uh, in making sure that, uh, that we can do this. And I think they, they really, enough people don't know what it is that they do and how they really do make a difference. And a lot of these kids that are single parents, sometimes not, uh, you know, grandparents that are raising right. kids, all of right. that. Oh, I think it's a great, uh, great example of charity, Ron. I thank you so very much, and I think your story is expe- especially uh, significant, given the fact that the state effectively slammed the door on you when you uh, sought out assistance in making your business uh, have opportunities to function in a more efficient manner, and you took your your uh, enterprise elsewhere, but you continue to give back to this community. I think we all appreciate that very much. Uh, Von Middlestadt, Vern Pearson, Ken Steers, who was with us earlier. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. I appreciate what you're doing. It's great. It cannot be measured in terms of the. Uh, long-term benefit from it i think that's great so as you can tell by the sound of the music i'm out of here for now but stick around the lovely kitty o'neill is coming up next with the afternoon news and i'll be back with you tomorrow have a great evening so long